So the next question that we got on the menu today is asking us how do we find the period of a wave? So let's actually um, define the word period in terms of waves in a more concrete sense. Okay, so a wave period is the time it takes for one wave cycle to complete. Um, you could do like time between peaks. Can measure as time between peaks. Okay, so suppose that we have a um, a graph or a wave that looks a little something like this. So we here we have our let's just say W for wave, and then along here we have time. So suppose that we have maybe a sinusoidal looking wave, looks something like this, and of course it's uh, going to repeat and repeat and repeat. So um, what you could say do here is, you see this this would be one wave cycle. One wave cycle. This could be maybe T2 and this could be T1. Period. T could be equal to T equals uh, T2 minus T1. And of course, like T1 would be zero in this case, but we don't necessarily need T1 to be zero. Um, maybe I can put this in another color. Like if we wanted to do uh, the distance between the peaks, uh, wait, that, that should line up with the, uh, just pretend that's a straight line. If uh, we do the distance between peaks, this could be like maybe TA and TB. And the time difference between them should also be T as well. So it doesn't matter where on the P on the wave that you're taking the measurement for period. It just matters that you know you're you have an entire wave cycle between your time measurements. Um, typically, people will recommend that you use the wave peaks because they're very visible and they're not very they're not at all ambiguous on where they stand. Um, if you do like in the middle of the wave, maybe somewhere here. Um, it's going to be tough to know exactly where. Like, it's going to probably be within there, but to know exactly where is going to be kind of tough. So, you typically want to choose an easy point where you can easily and clearly, unambiguously identify um, when you see it again on its subsequent wave period or wave cycle. Okay, so yeah, they have this uh, example here. So, you see, this is, I guess I use the same sinusoidal function as an example. And um, you can see that as soon as it repeats, that will be your T point, which is like the time of one period. Okay. And um, so th this will be how you do it visually by looking at a graph. Um, but sometimes you'll get a wave equation that's uh, a little something like this. So um, going down here, let's go back to a black color pen. Um, a lot of the times, wave equations will come like this. You might have something like your signal, let's call it Y, kind of like they do here. Um, y could be equal to A sine um, your angular frequency, omega T. Generally, you want to use omega for angular frequency. And we're, we're doing this all in radians um, plus some phase constant. Constant. Uh, you, you might also see it as a cosine as well. Not as common, but cosine is, is, um, is commonly seen as well. But 
less it's less popular than sign uh, people like sign I'm sure there are some signs as to why that might be the case uh, but yeah so we want to extract extract the angular frequency and we know that angular frequency is equal to 2 pi frequency and we know that um, we can isolate for frequency by doing f equals omega divided by 2 pi and we know that this is equal to 1 over t because frequency is the reciprocal of the period so we can use this equation and we can keep it moving to isolate for t so t is equal to 2 pi divided by the frequent the angular frequency okay now I'm not sure why they used P for angular frequency um, it could be a formatting thing but this would be how you find the period of a wave if you are given its equation but if you're given it visually um, just find identify where the wave starts where the wave ends and look for the distance or the time between them and that will be your period so yeah the above solution here is good is good um, unclear as to why P was used to represent angular frequency instead of um, Omega okay cool